This slideshow will teach you how to identify the various amphibian species you might encounter while out on the road on rainy spring or summer nights. It's geared toward the Monadnock region of southwest New Hampshire, though it will also apply to the rest of New Hampshire and parts of neighboring Vermont as well. If you're further afield than that, you may wish to consult a field guide or your state wildlife agency or a local nature center for information about amphibian species that are closer to home. We'll start with the three most common amphibian species found out and about on big nights in early spring in southwest New Hampshire, including this one, the poster child for the salamander crossing brigades, the spotted salamander. This salamander is unlikely to be mistaken for any other creature on account of its large size, they're about eight to 10 inches long, and its bright yellow polka dots. People who see a spotted salamander for the first time are often amazed by how large they are as well as how bright. These animals spend 95% of their lives underground, so big nights are really your best chance for spotting them. They also have an incredibly charismatic and charming smile that wins over anyone who lays eyes on them. Next we have the wood frog, one of our most common amphibians in early spring. These frogs are brown to orange in color. They grow to be about three inches long, so I think slightly smaller than the palm of your hand if you're an adult. And they have a very distinctive dark mask behind each eye. That is a key feature for identifying wood frogs. Once they reach their vernal pools, male wood frogs also have a very distinctive sound that they make, which is this. People sometimes mistake this for ducks, but it's actually male wood frogs chorusing. Wood frogs have a superpower, which is that they can survive winter by freezing solid. Their hearts stop beating, their lungs stop breathing. They produce a kind of natural antifreeze to protect their internal organs. And they wait in this state of suspended animation for spring. As a result, they don't have to overwinter deep below the forest floor, below the freeze line, but they can stay just a few inches below the surface of the forest, which means they're one of the first to get the signal that the ground is thawing and spring has arrived, and one of the earliest amphibians you might see on the road at the start of any spring. The third in our big three of early spring amphibian species is this frog, which you will be able to identify by sound, I bet, once I play their call for you. These are spring peepers. Spring peepers are one of our smallest frogs. They're much more likely to be heard than to be seen. Male peepers can make three to 4,000 peeps an hour for several hours each night but they're only an inch to an inch and a half long, so slightly bigger than a quarter. They can be tan to yellow to orangish in color. Some of them have a distinctive cross on their back, as you can see in this photo. That's how they get their Latin name, Pseudacris crucifer. Spring peepers are also tree frogs, so they have toe pads or suction cups on the end of their toes that help them climb. That's another distinctive field mark of a spring peeper. Here are some pictures to give you a sense of scale. Spring peepers, wood frogs, and spotted salamanders are by far the most common species you'll find at road crossings in the Monadnock region in the early spring. However, there is a fourth species that occurs at some of our sites, like Jordan Road in Keene and River Road in Westmoreland. That's the Jefferson salamander. This is a species of special concern in the state of New Hampshire, meaning that it's rare and of conservation concern. The Jefferson salamander is related to the spotted salamander, the same family of salamanders, but it's visually quite different. It's smaller in size, so where the spotted salamander is 8 to 10 inches long, kind of chunky sometimes, the Jefferson salamander is 5 to 7 inches long, a little sleeker looking. Jefferson salamanders also do not have yellow spots, but instead have pale blue flecking on a gray or brown skin. They have long toes and they have a tail that's flat, kind of like a rudder. There's another related salamander species, the blue spotted salamander, which has a darker gray skin with brighter blue flecking than the Jefferson salamander. 
In places where Jefferson and blue spotted salamanders coexist, they frequently hybridize. And it's so complex that you cannot tell just by looking whether a salamander is a true Jefferson, a true blue spotted, or the Jefferson blue spotted salamander complex, this hybrid. They have very complicated genetics that challenge the very notion of what it means to be a species. And in fact, there are a number of all female lineages of these hybrid salamanders. Because these species do theoretically coexist here in the Monadnock region, our assumption when we find a Jefferson salamander or blue spotted salamander is that it is a hybrid. So our data forms say Jefferson salamander, but really what we mean is the Jefferson blue spotted hybrid. As temperatures warm and spring wears on, more and more amphibian species can be found out and about on rainy nights. Some of them are migrating to breeding habitat, others are simply dispersing or foraging or hunting or enjoying the rain. So we'll go over now a few of the salamanders you might find out and about on the roads in April, May, and into June. And we'll start with one that's probably quite familiar to many of you, the red eft. This is a very distinctive salamander. It is bright orange. It's got orange or red spots running down its back and circled by black and some gold eyes. Very commonly seen on misty or rainy days out and about in the woods. This is actually the juvenile form of the salamander you see next to it, the Eastern Newt. They have an incredible life history, these, these amphibians. They start off in the water as eggs and then aquatic larvae that have gills. They transition into red Fs who live on land for two to seven years, roaming widely through the woods. And then they undergo another metamorphosis, another transition into adult newts, and they return to the water. Their color changes to olive green. Their skin thins so that they can actually absorb oxygen through it while they're underwater. They do keep their orange spots, as you can see, but they can live another 10 years underwater as breeding adults. So it's not likely that you'd see an adult newt out and about on a big night because they're largely aquatic, but you might see red Fs. They're more active in the day than at night, but we do occasionally find them at our crossings. The next species is one of the most common vertebrates in northeastern forests. It's down in the bottom left there, the red-backed salamander. This is a small salamander about the size of your pinky with a distinctive rust red stripe running down its back. It also has very small legs, as you can see. This is the salamander that you are most likely to find if you turn over logs in the woods or um, find a salamander in your wood pile. It's probably a red-backed. They're very difficult to pick up off the road because they're small and fast and very close to the ground. Your best chance of picking one up is actually to slide a data form underneath it and use that as kind of a scoop to shuttle them off the road. To the right of the redback, we have a less common species, not widely seen, but it is found at a few of our crossing sites, including Forest Lake Road in Winchester. This is the four-toed salamander. This is actually a swamp salamander that lays its eggs in sphagnum moss, which is why you don't necessarily see it very often um, on these big night migrations. It does have four toes on all four feet, but I don't recommend you use that as an identifying feature because they are very tiny and very hard to see. Instead, if you see a salamander that is um, similar in size to a redback, so again, about the size of your pinky, um, but looks a little different, I'd suggest you look at the base of the tail. You can see a constriction there that is kind of like a bottleneck. That's distinctive for the four-toed salamander and also a black and white speckled belly. That's a good distinguishing characteristic between redbacks and four-toads. And at some of our sites, we have one other small salamander species. Again, about the size of your pinky, but narrower than that. This is the northern two-lined salamander. It's got yellowish skin two black lines running parallel down the back. This is actually a stream salamander, so not commonly seen at road crossings. It's not migrating overland to breeding habitat, but every once in a while on a really warm rainy night, you might find a two-line salamander out and about enjoying the rain. So for those guys, again, you're looking at those two lines running down their back and a yellowish color. Just as we have more salamander species out and about on warmer weather, we also have more frogs. 
And here are a few that you might see as we get into April, May, and early June. First in the top left, one of my personal favorites is a gray tree frog. These frogs are beautiful. They look like bark. They live in bark. They eat insects that live on bark and they are fully adapted for life in trees. You can see that like the spring peepers, they have toe pads, suction cup toes. They are um, common migrants late spring, migrating to wetlands to breed. They have very bumpy bark-like skin and kind of a low profile. Uh, they stay close to the ground when they're moving. They can be anywhere in size from the size of a peeper, so the size of a quarter, all the way up to the size of the palm of your hand. They have wide range in size, but their distinctive marks are their toe pads and their bumpy bark-like skin. Next to that, we have the pickerel frog. This is a frog that is more common in streams and permanent ponds and lakes. It's got a very distinctive markings of dark brown, kind of square shaped blotches running down its back. People often see these and mistake them for what they think are leopard frogs, which are far less common in our region than pickerel frogs. And one dis way to distinguish between them is that leopard frogs have very circular spots, whereas pickle pickerel frogs have much more boxy, rectangular spots. During breeding season, you can also see that they have these bright yellow um, inner groins that are distinctive. The bottom two frogs are species that look very much alike and occupy very similar habitat and sometimes can be easily mistaken for one another. On our left here, we have our green frog. Both of these frogs are green in color, sometimes brownish as well. Um, and on the right, we've got our bullfrog. So how do you tell a green frog from a bullfrog? There's a few ways. One is if you find an enormous frog that weighs five pounds, it is definitely a bullfrog because they are the only frogs in our region that grow to that size. If you find a smaller greenish colored frog, one way to tell bullfrogs from green frogs is to look at their backs. You can see that the green frog has a ridge, actually two ridges running down the length of their back. Those are called dorsolateral ridges. Wood frogs have them too, and they're quite distinctive. Bullfrogs do not have those ridges running down their back. And so that's always my surefire way to tell a green frog from a bullfrog is if they've got those ridges, it's a green frog. If they don't, it's a bullfrog. One last species that's kind of a class all its own, which is the American toad. They do have a breeding migration moving to shallow ponds and wetlands in late April and early May. They vary in size from tiny toadlets that could fit on a fingernail all the way up to large, long-lived adults that uh, you might see in your garden. They have very bumpy, warty skin, which is a distinctive identifying characteristic. They have an upright posture. They often look grumpy and um, quite stout. Stout and warty is how I would describe American toads. They're very distinctive. So now we'll take a look at a few pairs of commonly confused species, species that might look alike at first glance, but when you take a closer look, you can tell them apart. We'll start with gray tree frogs and American toads, both of whom have bumpy skin that can sometimes be grayish or brownish in color. But really the similarities end there. So in terms of color variation, toads tend toward brown or even orange or tan. Gray tree frogs can be grayish or brown, but also can be green. Both of these species have a wide size range from, from tiny juveniles all the way up to large adults, but toads get quite a bit bigger. And a really important difference is their feet and their posture. So toads are upright. They also are hoppers. So you can see that they have feet that are adapting for hopping around on the forest floor, pointy toes. Gray tree frogs are climbers. They tend to be close to the ground, um, and they have toe pads. They have suction cup toes for climbing trees. So the real differences to look for are color. If you've got a greenish frog with bumpy bark-like skin, that's a gray tree frog. If you've got an orangish amphibian with bumpy skin, it's probably a toad. But also stature, whether one is upright and stout or um, leaning close to the ground, and then toes, toe pads versus pointy toads. 
Gray tree frogs are also occasionally confused with spring peepers, especially when the gray tree frogs are very small. They both do have toe pads, those suction cup toes for climbing trees. They're the only two tree frog species here in New Hampshire, but it's pretty easy to tell them apart if you look at their skin. So gray tree frogs, again, have that bumpy bark-like texture, whereas spring peepers have really smooth skin, typically more tan or orange in color. Spring peepers and wood frogs are usually fairly easily distinguished by their different sizes. Wood frogs are significantly larger. However, it is possible to have a juvenile wood frog that is about the same size as a large adult peeper. If you aren't sure, there's two things you can look for. The first thing I always look for is that dark bandit mask behind the eye. Wood frogs have that dark mask, spring peepers do not. You can also, again, look at the toes because spring peepers have toe pads, those suction cup toes, and wood frogs have pointed toes. So if you're unsure, look first for the bandit mask. If it's not there or you want to confirm, look next at the toes. So after all of this training, what if you still can't tell what species you have? This is an example of a really interesting and confusing animal that was found at our Forest Lake Road crossing site in Winchester. So what I would recommend you do if you find something that you cannot identify is simply take a picture and send it to me at thielen at harriscenter.org and I will be happy to puzzle it through with you. Sometimes it will be clear to me what species you have, other times, like in this instance, I will have to share it with a bunch of my herpetologist friends and they'll hem and haw about it for a while. In this case, they came back and decided that it was a spotted salamander with very strange spots. So that concludes our whirlwind tour through the amphibians of Big Night in Southwest New Hampshire. All of these species along with photos and notes on identifying characteristics can be found on amphibian ID sheets that are available at the Harris Center website. And of course, we're always happy to have your amphibian related questions to me at Thielen at harriscenter.org. There's also a ton of other information online at our website, harriscenter.org. So happy salamandering to you.